Aircraft are such powerful tools. You know, there's a vast amount of aircraft just sitting around in hangars doing nothing. A lot of the time, they're just attacks right off. They're just unwanted inheritances or toys that were fun a few years ago but never have time to use them anymore. We have a perfect platform to launch a nonprofit that, that involves aircraft uh, and to be able to use them in a, in a way that they currently aren't being used uh, in order to help people rather than just purely for business purposes. As a child, I always wanted to be a pilot. Um, I was fortunate enough to have the resources to do that, um, but I know that there's many people that don't. It's a very expensive thing to get into. So we saw an opportunity to help kids get into it uh, that, that would never ever think that they would be able to do that. This whole thing started by pretty much Dave Roach. He goes to our church and he just was like, he heard that I was interested in flight school and he started talking to me about this aviation in action and how they're prepping for a scholarship. We talked over in a little interview and then I think two weeks later Dave said that I had gotten a scholarship and that the award banquet was going to be sometime in December and it's getting there as to I'm actually going to do this and it's sinking in now that oh boy I got in. My instructor's name was Matt, and he's a pretty fun guy. Like, I think if we train a lot, we'll, we'll get to be good friends, because he's a fun guy. Takeoff, I felt my heart racing. I was like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. And I didn't even know we left the ground at first. If you look down to your left, you'll see the little tiny cars. And then you look over to your right and you just see a ton of mountains. It's just an awesome view. Like it's like, oh, it's just jaw dropping. I've had a hard time. My family's had a hard time. And it seems like we couldn't get much help. And so I think the only way for me to actually enjoy this is to help people. We recently purchased a training plane that we're going to use on the scholarship program, um, but we don't want it sitting on the ground doing nothing. So what we're also going to do with it is go to veterans that are retraining to be pilots after they get out of the military. What the veterans do for our country is incredible and the sacrifices they make. So in many ways, it's the least we could do. And it's something that we as Aviation in Action want to make sure that we cover. A lot of times aircraft can represent a life-saving tool whether it's for children that need to go somewhere or whether it's for relatives that need to be by the side of their loved ones. Uh, often the situations that people need to go to treatment but they wouldn't do it otherwise because they don't have the resources. Learning on August 12th that you have stage four metastasized cancer and then September 13th, you're holding your husband in your arms and he's dying, that's hard to process and you don't have time to process it. All we could think of was get to the girls because Tony's entire strength at that time was in his family and the girls were 2,200 miles away. The doctors agreed to put him on extremely strong fentanyl patches and morphine. Aviation in action flew us first class so that Tony could fly because there was not a seat in any other, like coach, he would have been in agony. If he would have been left in California and Tony would have died away from his girls. And I can't thank enough. For us, aviation in action was a miracle. It was a huge answer. I met Mike Kuzno of 1040 Initiative through New Hope and through Pastor Roland. Um, and the, at the time that I met him, I had already developed the two, two parts of, the, of Aviation in Action, the scholarship side and the medical side. But I knew that there was something else that we could be doing. And as soon as I met Mike Kuzno, I knew what that was. Uh, and that was humanitarian air support. So as I spoke to him, I realized that there's probably a distinct need for him to be able to get his teams around the country in a quick and efficient way other than using transportation on bad roads. 
Um, so over time, I developed a relationship with him. He asked me to go to the Ivory Coast as part of his 20-something mission uh, as a mentor. So I went along um, with two missions in mind. One is to do the work that he wanted us to do. But the second is to see what kind of logistics um, there were out there, what kind of infrastructure there is, and how we could help as far as aviation in action is concerned to move people around in a much more efficient manner. So during that trip, I realized that's very difficult to get around. Uh, I also realized that we were gonna need a helicopter and not an airplane. Uh, that was an important point. And um, that's what we're focusing on this year, is to get a helicopter to help 1040 Initiative in the Ivory Coast. Well, there's various ways to get involved with aviation in action. As a pilot, it's obvious you can offer your time either as an instructor or as a pilot for medical flying. If you're an aircraft owner, you can offer your aircraft for our pilots to use as part of the medical um, program. As far as the overseas side of it goes, well, financially, that's a very expensive part of our program. Uh, it's going to be the biggest financial burden for us uh, and the hardest logistically to get done. So what we're looking for is partners, financial partners who can either give give on a regular basis or a one-time gift that will help us get the type of aircraft that we need and to be able to sustain those aircraft through the purchase of fuel and insurance and all the other things that accompany that. We know the path is going to be challenging, but we know we can do it with your help. Help us to help the people who need it the most. Thank you.